the Palm Beach Civic Association expands its communication outreach with a state-of-the-art television studio. We call it Studio 33480, the zip code for the beautiful island of Palm Beach. Sponsored by Finley Galleries, our goal is to bring you in-depth interviews with the most colorful and knowledgeable personalities on the island. And now, our host. Welcome to Studio 33480. I'm Wendy Rutledge. You know, safety has always been a driving factor behind everything that the Palm Beach Police Department does. And now they have added a new unit, all for our safety. It's all centered on the idea of increased awareness of mental illness and other factors that affect behavior. So with us to learn more about that today, we have Captain Will Rothrock. Thank you for being here. Happy to be here. Thank you, Wendy. Terrific. So um, why did the police department perceive the need to create this new unit? And by the way, it is called not mental health, but it's called behavioral science unit. Yes, yes. So the behavioral science unit, the chief, you know, Chief Caristo has seen, you know, recently an increase in mental health related calls, you know, to law enforcement over the last couple of years. And we've seen that, you know, nationwide as well as locally. And we've seen other agencies, you know, have success with similar behavioral science units where you have a unit uh, of some specially trained officers that are able to do follow-up, you know, that's necessary for mental health-related calls, sometimes domestic calls or, you know, issues that maybe affect the public safety. And, you know, it's all about being proactive and finding where you may have someone who hasn't committed a criminal act, but there may need to be ongoing risk assessment and threat assessment and something that the police department needs to follow up on and possibly need to issue a risk protection order it, and all geared towards keeping the community safe at this. So, um, right. But... I'd love you to get a little concrete with some examples. It doesn't have to be a real person, but the types of incidents that require this extra level of sensitivity. So, you know, we we have, you know, maybe three main categories for this, and one of them would be someone that's in a mental health crisis. And while all of our officers are trained in, you know, mental health related items and some of them receive crisis intervention training, really our behavior, behavioral science unit has officers that are more equipped to deal with somebody that's in crisis. And after we resolve a crisis uh, where someone maybe is Baker acted and the police department in the last 12 months has responded to about 30 mental health complaints and the vast majority, I think somewhere around 25, have resulted in someone being involuntarily transported under the Baker Act for evaluation somewhere. And that behavioral science unit is able to do the follow-up afterwards when they're released and check on them, you know, in a day or, or two days or a week or a month and see where things are and make sure that we can provide resources. In addition to crisis moments, I mean, we have a population of, you know, people experiencing homelessness. And that population is, you know, a large portion of them have mental health issues. And I think just since January, we've had identified over 60 persons that are experiencing homelessness here in town, individuals, on multiple occasions. And you know, that's a lot for the area that we have. And these officers, with the training that they have and the resources they have, are able to check up on them and see if there's services or referrals that we can give them, you know, off-island where those things are provided. So that's another example of where they may be needed. And then, you know, there's also the increase in autism and whether that's diagnosis wise or it's actual numbers wise you know these officers are better equipped to deal with that and you know they also go through our virtual training system and that virtual reality system has scenarios specifically in there with people that are playing an autistic person and provides them with the tools they need to maybe communicate better with those people and find successful outcomes. And through that virtual training system, uh, you get a real life scenario and the police officer has to play it out, right? Yes. So it's a almost 360 degree stage platform and an officer you know goes into the center of it and is completely surrounded by screens you know they have to be cognizant of what's behind them what's in front of them what's going on to the right and there's a video scenario that plays and the officer interacts with it and we have an operator a trained operator that can change the scenario based on what 
the officer is doing, you know, what kind of behaviors the officer is uh, putting out there and what kind of actions they're taking. And they can manipulate the situation from behind the scenes to, you know, maybe throw an obstacle in the way of the officer or the officer is doing everything right. And here the scenario ends in a positive way. And it gives us, you know, a way to teach back those moments and say, hey, it didn't go well. You know, maybe try this, maybe try this and, you know, reinforce those skills and training that they need for these things and then, you know, have them go through it again and come out with a successful outcome. Let's take a quick peek at this Vertra training system in one of your scenarios. I need some time to adjust. I have a patient with me. I am just waiting for my mom. Okay. Just tell her find out where's mom at. Okay. Just tell her find out where's mom at. So, Captain Rothrock, that that seems uh, incredibly effective. Does this uh, increase awareness and building up this behavioral um, science unit reflect an increase in sort of aberrant behavior? tough situations for cops to handle? So, you know, I think we have definitely seen an increase in mental health related calls. Uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I mean, just in the last months, we month we've had, or the last year we've had about 30 calls. I think the state of Florida, the last records that they put out were that there were over 200,000 Baker Acts in the state, uh, and 51% of those were initiated by law enforcement. You know, the county has, you know, over 1,400 persons experiencing homelessness in the county, and, you know, I think as a confluence of all of this, you know, we are seeing more and more instances where we're having to handle mental health issues, and, you know, it's it's also related to our, you know, the simple fact that we're usually the first responder to most of these calls. And it it puts us in a unique position when we can have those resources in order to help someone out, you know, instead of putting them through the criminal justice system. And that's kind of really my last question is just, does this help you avoid moving straight to some more threatening posture that does it give you some more time to sort of talk people down or more skills to be able to kind of meet them at their level? I think it gives us, you know, more more training and resources and options and skills and able to be able to relate to, you know, someone who's experiencing a mental health episode or someone who's experiencing homelessness. And I, th- I think at the end of the day, you know, the more officers that are able to provide that follow-up service, you know, and and to stay, you know, not just one incident, but, you know, they go out with that person again in a week or they see them again in a month and they're able to maybe follow a case from beginning to end, you know, it keeps the entire community safe. And I find Because of the possibility of repeat behavior. Yeah, so, you know, it, a lot of times historically law enforcement would criminalize mental health issues or ignore you know, often mental health issues and, you know, sometimes even put those issues through the criminal justice system where, you know, a lot of them maybe don't belong. And I think, you know, law enforcement as a whole has kind of moved to a more holistic approach and seen success with that. And when we can proactively, you know, deal with someone who maybe is experiencing mental health issues and provide them with resources or continuing services or develop that rapport with them, it may prevent crimes in the future, whether those be as minor as trespassing on someone's property or something significant like a violent crime. That is, uh, it's just so admirable. And, uh, you know, kudos to the entire police department for kind of moving in that, in that recognizing the need and then adapting the department with this new unit. Um, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. It's, uh, it's definitely, you know, it's good to see the success stories and I look forward to seeing more of them as we continue forward. Oh, us too. Well, thanks for sharing with us today. So glad you're here. And that does it for us here in Studio 33480. As always, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time right here in Studio 33480. Studio 33480 is brought to you by the Palm Beach Civic Association, our sponsor, Finley Galleries, and our viewers. We welcome your thoughts on how our programming can best serve our members and residents.